The sad thing about most bake ovens is that they no longer exist. Here, however, is an example of the remains of a bake oven. Beautifully made, hand cut stones. Unfortunately, the dome has fallen in, probably because there's no roof anymore. There is one hint of a rafter left, but once the roof goes and the dome is no longer protected, it doesn't take many years for it to simply fall in. On this bake oven, the low height of the entrance shows it was designed for really short Germans. On the side is an opening. As with other bake ovens we've looked at, this is not for ashes, but it's simply more than likely a storage space for wood. This particular iron door is a later addition. The floor of the oven is supported by enormous stone lintels that cross from one side of the foundation to the other leaving a very large open space underneath. On top of the stone lintels is placed the brick floor and above that is the dome. We don't think that every farm in this valley had a bake oven. There's simply no evidence to show that. We think it's more likely that every two, three, or four farms would actually share a bake oven because you're not using the bake oven every day. At the most, you're using it once or two times a week. And that way, several farms could share the same oven. We're here in the village of Rough and Ready, and we're not quite sure how it's got its name. In fact, there's not much of a village left here anyway. The house behind me, however, at one time, within memory, had a bake oven. Now, the idea that one bake oven could supply a number of farms or houses could have happened right here. What's left now is, to my left, a house that was originally the general store, which is now vacant. Down the road is another farm just a couple hundred yards down, and beyond that is yet another farm. It's possible, though we don't know for certain, that the bake oven that was at this house supplied all the baking needs for this entire small community. Hi, here we are between Haas and Kelbestedel, two villages in our valley. This open fireplace tells the story of a bake oven that was actually part of the summer house. That's unusual, as we've seen here, because most of the bake ovens are actually freestanding and apart from the summer house. Here, it was actually incorporated into the back of the fireplace. This arch is built over the original entrance to the bake oven, which has now been filled in with bricks. What you'll see is the metal rim that held the bake oven door. On top of the mantle here is, surprisingly enough, the door to the bake oven. It's been here for decades. Doris, who currently owns the farm, has lived here 60 years, and it was a surprise to her to find that this was laying up here on the, uh, up on the mantle. This is made by uh, the Durr Foundry in Pottsville, the county seat. We've seen other examples of the bake oven stove doors made by Durr. I think it was Charles Durr in Pottsville, probably the 1840s or 1850s or so. They made a lot of bake oven doors. This fit 
right here. What you'll see is that the piece fits the puzzle perfectly. The door fit right here. The pentels that held it in place have been broken off, though the part that was embedded into the brick remains. So this is the way it looked originally. They would open up the door and the bake oven would actually extend beyond the outside wall of the open fireplace. Let's go outside and see what's left. Here we are on the outside of the summer kitchen. The arch is here. You'll see what's missing is the bake oven itself. These stones were probably part of the foundation that supported the bake oven. There are also remains of Brits that may have been incorporated into the bake oven roof. They built the brick arch on top of an iron plate that supported not only the arch, but the stonework above it. This is the fill, the brick infill. When they knocked down the bake oven, they used this to fill in the opening. This is the story of what happened to so many bake ovens, not only in our valley, but throughout the country. As baking moved from the mass production of bake ovens to the smaller scale in-house production of coal and wood stoves that began in the early 19th century, these ovens became obsolete. The fact that any of them remain at all is purely accidental and amazing. This is the story of most of the bake ovens and the only reason this part still remains is because the summer house in this case is used for storage. The open fireplace is no longer used for cooking, soap making, apple butter making, or any of the traditional uses uh, for summer kitchens. Here we are in a summer kitchen outside Rough and Ready at a neighbor's farm. This is actually typically called the shanty around here. So we're in the shanty and this is what put the bake ovens out of business. I know, I know they're still in business, but this technological improvement, improvement in the sense that the fire was contained in a fire box, an improvement in the sense that you could actually stay inside year round. It could be snowing outside, it could be raining, but you are inside, you have a contained fire, and even though the actual baking compartment provides a much smaller area for baking your breads, pies, cakes, cookies, whatever, meaning it's, it's going to take more baking cycles to complete the equivalent of a baked day in a bake oven, still the advantages of staying inside, having a continual fire, which actually required less wood throughout the day than a bake oven does. These combine to make the cast iron cut stove the baker's choice during the 19th century. Actually, this style, this model of stove, was pretty much uh, completed by the Civil War, and it remained the style of choice in, well into the 20th century. The introduction of iron and steel technology throughout the 19th century affected not only the stove in which they were able to bake, but also the tools they used for baking. For example, this raising bowl is made out of tin, has a tin lid and the tin bottom. This supplanted the dough box. So instead of having the wooden dough bots, now we have the metal dough bots. The rice straw basket was made obsolete by these tinned bread pans. Sometimes they were handmade, sometimes they were factory made, 
But this is what the housewife of the 19th century and well into the 20th century was using instead of the free-form round loaf, they were nicely contained in these. Now, again, these do not give you the crust that the rice straw basket and the traditional baked oven gives. But this is a way that actually made it more convenient for the housewife to stay in her kitchen and make bread in the convenience of her home without going outdoors. These bread pans also actually changed the style of America's eating habits. With the round loaf from the rice straw baskets, you would basically break it off in big chunks, maybe slather it with butter or jam or something and just eat it. However, with these bread pans, you were able to actually slice the bread and make sandwiches. Again, a very much a 19th century tradition in eating. With the firebox on one side, you would be cooking on these four surfaces as well as baking in the oven. But because the fire was on one side, about halfway through your baking, you had to, had to open the door, turn everything 180 degrees so that what was on the further side away from the firebox was now close to it. This way you would have an even baking and everything would be completely done. 